Uh, hi everyone, my name is Chandrakant and today I am presenting universal safety um, solution. So let's start with that. So starting with the company overview, uh, universal safety manufactures safety devices for corporate customers. Uh, they are located in US and Canada and their business point, pain point is uh, they have different isolated systems which are having scalability issues. So they are looking for a centralized solution which can help them in growing the customer base and expand the business. Uh, coming to the risk and assumption, so the major risk I can see is uh, we have to develop a mobile publisher app. So uh, for customers, so in order to do that, what I will do is I recommend submitting early assets. Uh, so the testing can be completed in the time and uh, it can be submitted for approval to the Google Play Store and iOS by Salesforce. Then there are separate IT teams for that I'll be introducing uh, center of excellence and I'll be setting the standards, technical standards. Adjunction that I have taken in this solution is uh, the design tool that is that is used by, used by system specialists. Just at the design document, it can be extended and ERP has barcode generation capabilities. Coming to the strategy part, I recommend going with single org here. I do not uh, see any different business processes and single organization. I recommend going with multi-language since uh, there, is, there is needs to support in English and French. I would be enabling multi-currencies where I will set USD as corporate currency and I will add Canadian dollar as another currency. I recommend going with translation workbench, custom labels, and I would be embedding a language speaker inside the experience cloud site. For mobile, I recommend going with Salesforce mobile for internal users and mobile publisher for customers because there is a need for a separate branding and customers would be using mobile publisher. For data, I recommend going with a data warehouse for archival. Uh, files, I recommend going with Astra because there is a large volume of files that needs to be accommodated, which Salesforce platform will not be able to handle. Uh, coming to the licenses part, system specialist, we have 3,000 system specialists. I recommend providing themselves cloud license certification. They would be working on prospect, uh, account, opportunity, and port, and their identity would be Active Directory. Support representative, we have 500 for them. I recommend going with Service Cloud along with Service Cloud Voice plus digital engagement. Justification is they would be working on customer account and cases plus leads that would be raised from different channels. Their identity would be Active Directory uh, for managers. There are 180 managers which are located at uh, region office, uh, local office. For them, I recommend going with Sales Cloud plus WCRM growth license. Justification is they need access on account opportunity, custom object and cases. Their identity would be Active Directory. Then there are 6,000 contractors who would be working uh, for installation part of the customer locations. For them, I recommend going with Community Cloud Plus license. Justification is they need access on contract and customer accounts and work order. Their identity would be Salesforce. Primary customers, there are 200K. For them, I recommend going with CC Plus license. Justification is they need access on account, custom objects, and reporting. And there are identity would be social sign on, secondary customer contacts, which are which are 500K. For them, I recommend going with community cloud license justification is in an access on account, uh, custom objects, and their own cases. Their identity would be social sign on. Coming to the role hierarchy part, then there would be a neutral safety headquarter. Then there is a US headquarter. Similar role hierarchy would be repeated for the Canada. Then there would be a regional manager would be reporting to the headquarter person. Uh, there would be a location manager reporting a regional manager. System specialist would be uh, reporting to location manager. Uh, contractors who are external users, so they would be reporting to the system specialist. Then primary customer contact, again, they are system plus users, so they'll be having a role and they would be reporting to account owned by system specialist role. Uh, there are uh, different service center located in US and Canada. So there would be a service center head will be directly reporting to the headquarter and support reps would be reporting to particular service center head. This financial role is nothing, but it would be a system admin role. There is a need for finance. So I will come back to later when we talk about sharing and visibility. 
coming to my system landscape, highly combined enabling sales cloud and service cloud in order to uh, implement the solution. Along with that, I would be implementing service cloud voice with partner telephony. Here, my assumption is that since there are three support centers, there would be an existing telephony, hence I'm going with partner telephony. Alternatively, I also thought about uh, service cloud voice with Amazon contact, Amazon connect center. Um, DocuSign, I recommend because there is a need for digital signature by contactor as well as the customers. Digital engagement in order to send the outbound SMS. Tableau CRM in order to do the uh, reporting requirements and S drive would be the uh, file, file strategy. I would be creating experience cloud site for customers as well as the contractors. So customer would be logged into experience cloud site through social sign on and uh, they would be using YDC flow. They will be also logging through experience cloud site from mobile publisher at that time user agent plus YDC flow will come into picture. Since there are multiple systems, I recommend uh, going with MuleSoft as ESP. MuleSoft will be connected with Salesforce using auth chart flow. And I would be enabling mutual transport layer security on, on Salesforce as well as the MuleSoft. So on integration, the uh, two-way certificate, uh, both the party would be presenting certificates and it would be more secure. There are three monitoring system which performs uh, and uh, which provides different kind of events, alarming, etc. I would be connecting them with uh, MuleSoft using APIs that are provided by monitoring systems. Then there are two different ERPs. One is from US and one is from Canada. These ERPs currently does sales, insulation, maintenance, support, order, and billing. So uh, I recommend retiring sales installation, maintenance and support part from these both ERP. This, that would be part from my Salesforce. These both ERP would be connected with uh, Salesforce using a MuleSoft as ESP. And again, uh, the existing, uh, these data nets will be migrated from this ERP. So I recommend going with Informatica is ETL. Informatica would be connected with Salesforce using Authjot flow. I would be using bulk API 2.0 in order to migrate data from um, ERP monitoring system, existing CRM, etc. cetera. Uh, for file migration, I'd be using s APIs. There is an existing CRM which is used to uh, capture the leads. Uh, it also contains scheduling and ordering part. That I recommend to Sunset, and I would be migrating data from this CRM to Salesforce. I recommend going with an enterprise data warehouse since there are multiple ERP monitoring system and Salesforce. So data needs to be uh, archived at regular interval um, in order to avoid performance issues. And so I recommend going with an enterprise data warehouse. Um, there is an existing design tool. So designers would be logging to Salesforce and when, whenever they want to generate a design documents, I recommend going with a Canvas app but this design tool would be embedded. I'll be creating a connected app and there would be a tab from the tab. Whenever the, uh, whenever the system specialists want to create a design document, they can click the tab and Canvas kind of send request would be generated and design tool would be loaded. Uh, there is an active directory. Uh, in order to implement single sign-on, I recommend going with an identity connect, which will be using SP initiated flow with SAML 2.0 and there is also a requirement for doing a deep linking. So this would be achieved using an identity connect along with Active Directory. Alternatively, I also thought of going with Active Directory for services, uh, but here my assumption is from future perspective, there would be a requirement for provision and deprovision and that is not supported by IDFS. Then there is an existing website. So uh, leads would be generated from this website using web to lead form and it would be assigned to the web system specialist. Internal users can log into browser through SP initiated SAML 2.0 flow. Whenever they will be logging using Salesforce mobile app, there would be an user agent plus layered flow, which would be SAML 2.0, SP initiated SAML 2.0 flow triggered. Uh, that would only triggered once. Once they are logged in, then next time user agent flow will continue. Uh, going with my uh, data model. So I would be enabling uh, person accounts as person accounts. Uh, contractors would be created as person accounts. Then all the customers would be business accounts. So the process starts when, whenever 
uh, when our customer commercial customer wants to install the SAPTIS system, so they would be submitting a lead from their website, and that lead would be assigned to particular uh, support rep. Those support rep will work on that lead, and they would be converting them to account contact and opportunity. And along with this, uh, that particular account, there would be a location associated for which the safety device needs to be installed. So uh, what will happen is for that particular location, a site visit would be created, uh, which would be a task. And once the site visit is done at that time, uh, uh, system specialist can generate the estimate, which would be my court document uh, that would be provided to the customer. Once customer are happy with the uh, Estimate they would be doing a digital signature using the DocuSign and um, all the picture and videos uh, that would be uploaded to a particular design, design which would be uh, a set design plan for that particular location. So once a uh, design has been finalized uh, at that time, uh, there would be a negotiation between commercial customer as well as the system specialist. So once design documents are ready, it would be attached with a design record, which would be files. Post that a contractor would be assigned to a design. So this contractor would review the design and if there are any changes, then we will recommend and then the process will start. Post that, um, what will happen is uh, contractor will accept the uh, design and a contract needs to be generated. So I'll be generating a sales contract and the contract is generated. It needs to be signed by a particular contractor. So I would be utilizing DocuSign envelope for that. Once it is done, then there would be a order created with the uh, required order line items. And I'm utilizing native product price book um, and press book entry functionalities. And once order is finalized, it would be sent to ERP. Uh, post that a work order would be created that would be part of the installation. So work order would be assigned to a contractor. Contractor will work on that particular work order. And once a work order is closed, um, the devices would be created as an asset. And if there are any support requirements, then a case would be created for particular uh, uh, monitoring devices. And along with that, a task would be created. And there is also a requirement uh, for a scheduled maintenance for a particular location, which is quietly twice a year. For that, I'm proposed going with a custom object maintenance schedule. And uh, for lock, for particular customer's location, there would be financial data that would be stored in a separate object. Now, uh, going with my uh, business processes. So coming to um, sales and design, so process starts uh, whenever a customer wants to install, um, whenever customer is planning to install SAPTI devices in their particular um, uh, location, right? So they can go to a website and uh, they can give a call to any of the three support center that uh, uh, USD is having. And so for that, I recommend going with a service cloud voice with partner telephony. Again, as I said, I, uh, here my assumption is there is an existing contact center, and uh, based on uh, based on the configuration in this partner telephony, the call would be routed to uh, uh, proper uh, support center as well as the agent. In order to uh, in order to submit prospects from the website, I recommend going with web to lead, and I recommend going with omnichannel queue based routing here. And there are approximately 5,000 prospective customers per month, uh, which, which are added through system through one of this channel. So web to lead monthly limit are 15,000. And since these are 5,000, we are still in the limit. But if there are any ex exceeding limits, then I will thought of some alternate solution. As of now, this is fine and it's scalable. Uh, support rep will be pre-qualifying the prospective customer and sales force, and there will be a set of questionnaires they will be going through that. So for that, I recommend going with the screen flow, and questionnaires would be uh, stored in a custom metadata. So in the screen flow only, they would be, uh, once they're satisfied uh, with the questionnaire, the, there would be an option to convert a lead from a flow only. And post that an account would be created and contact would be created along with the opportunity and there will be a task created for support rep for the site visit. Now, during this site visit, system specialist can take picture, video of the site and upload them for reference during the 
uh, final design and they can create a preliminary estimate and send copy to customer by email and they can also capture the GPS info for that location. So for all these requirements, I recommend going with the Salesforce mobile app, which will be having a lightning web component embedded with a geolocation API, which is a JavaScript library. Uh, I would be providing a quick action in Salesforce mobile app, which would be creating a design track code and I would be uploading all this file into particular design record. So it would be easily available for customer as well as the contractors. Of course, that I'll be creating a quote. Uh, uh, a quote would be created from the Salesforce mobile app and uh, sent to uh, customer. The PDF would be sent to customer through email. Uh, the creation of an estimate activates a process to allow customer to access Salesforce to view the estimate and collaborate with system specialists during the design process. So whenever a quote is created, I recommend going with the record trigger flow with invocable Apex, which in turn will be calling a queueable Apex to create experience cloud user in order to avoid mixed HTML error. And there will be record setter fits to collaborate on the design record for customer as well as the uh, system specialist. Uh, back at the office, the system specialist creates design plan with the custom design tool. And this file can be 100 MB in size or larger. So here I recommend um, uh, whenever a system specialist want to uh, create a design plan with design tool, they will be create, clicking on a tab that would be a canvas and request generated. It would be passed to a design tool and a system specialist would be smoothly logged into a design tool. So they can create design there. Once the design is finalized and the document is generated, I'll be using the auth token that is passed in the sign request. And I would be utilizing REST API with multiple requests in order to store that file that is generated from design tool to the Salesforce file on design record. So that file would be attached here. Uh, once the design documents are created, the system specialist notifies the customer to access documents via Salesforce. And customer can also collaborate with the system specialist during this particular review. And what if the design is meeting customer's requirement, customer digitally signs updated estimate to proceed with the installation. So on, on this design, uh, customer would and system specialist would be collaborating. So what I will do is I, there would be a quick action on code. And there would be a screen flow, which would be providing a custom notification that all the documents are ready. You can have a look at that. And uh, as I said, there will be record feeds for collaboration and design records. And once it is done, then there will be a document to sign the code document. So customer would be signing the final document. At this point, the customer also provides financial data to the system specialist, which is record uh, on their location record. And this step initiates an approval process where the local manager or regional manager uh, must approve the customer for the work. So financial data is stored in a separate uh, object only. In order to, uh, since it's a crucial data, I recommend going with a separate object. And there would be a standard approval process all designed where uh, uh, System specialist who is the account owner, account owners, managers would be triggered at approval. Uh, customers should be able to use their Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn credentials to log in Salesforce and collaborate with US team. So for that, I recommend going with a social sign-on along with the auth provider, which will be using YDC flow. And in the experience cloud site, I will be enabling uh, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn as a login option. Uh, contracting and installation. So UST works with contractors to install customer system. Uh, now, these contractor records are created and managed in appropriate ERP, ERP system and should not be created or updated in Salesforce. That's a requirement. And uh, contractor records created and updated ERP should be sent to Salesforce daily. Uh, new contractors should be automatically provisioned for access to Salesforce user native credential. So for all this, what I recommend is there would be a validation role on user object so that only service user can create contractor records. Now service user would be the user who is authorized as part of MuleSoft. And uh, here my integration one uh, will come into picture. So this integration one provides contractor provisioning and it would be done using a 
scheduled job, uh, which would be triggered from ERP to Salesforce. So what MuleSoft will do is at regular interval, MuleSoft will pull contractor data from ERP nightly, and MuleSoft will do remote call to Salesforce in order to create, update, or deactivate users inside Salesforce. And this integration would be secured using auth job with mutual transport layer security. The system specialist selects a contactor for customer installation, at which point the customer design document, estimate, photos, videos, and collaboration specs are automatically made available to the contractor via Salesforce. So what system specialist will do is on design that what is system specialist will populate the lookup of contractor. And at the time only, I recommend going with the Apex Manager Sharing, which will be providing access to required records the moment uh, a lookup is populated with design by default, contactor will get access to files. Uh, the contactor reviews the customer document and collaborates with system specialist and the customer is needed. If necessary, the system specialist revises the document and repeats the customer approval process. So contactor will be reviewing all these uh, design files that are available in the design records. Um, and whatever collaboration is to be done, it will happen on the design only. Uh, not location. And if contractor is not happy, uh, then what will happen is the design approval process will be repeated and document is to be recreated. Once the design is acceptable to the contractor, the contractor indicates acceptance in Salesforce. At this point, the system automatically generates a contract agreement for the contractor to sign online, which is stored in Salesforce. So what will happen is, this design will have status. So once the status is changed to accepted by contractor, I recommend going with a record trigger flow, which will be creating a contract. And on contract creation, it will automatically trigger DocuSign document, DocuSign annual doc to sign the contract. The system specialist is notified of contractor acceptance and signal at which point they can do final review and place the order for required devices, material, and supplies. So what will happen is the moment a docu, uh, docu sign envelope is signed uh, with a particular contract, at that time uh, there would be a uh, contract would be activated. And I recommend going with a record trigger flow to create an order with order line item. So the order is created in Salesforce. Once order is flagged as complete, Salesforce send the order info to the appropriate ERP system where a sales order is created and fulfilled. The detailed order data in ERP should be viewable and accessible from within Salesforce. So for uh, requirement number A, I recommend going with integration two, which would be uh, remote process invocation fire and forget pattern. Uh, that would be creating an order. So source would be Salesforce, destination would be ERP. So there would be a record trigger flow. So whenever an order is created, I, I will be publishing a platform event. ESB would be subscribing to platform and using format the protocol. Yes, we will do remote call to Salesforce in order to get order and order line items. And then post that ESB will do the orchestration and call the relevant ERP. And this integration will be secured using also with one back SSL. Um, and once the order is created, ESB will update to Salesforce that order, order has been created. Now, detailed order data in ERP system should be viewable or accessible from within the Salesforce. If system specialists want to view the order and its detail uh, from the ERP, it should be uh, visible from Salesforce. So for that, I recommend integration number three, which, would, which is remote process uh, invocation request and reply pattern. Again, sources Salesforce, destination is ERP. There would be a quick action on order. On the quick auction, I will launch Lightning Web Component with Apex Callout, which would be expecting a response from ESB. It will call the ESP endpoint, and ESB will orchestrate and call the relevant ERP, and it will return the order data. Again, this integration will be secured using also with mutual transport layer security. And the next one is ERP system updates the order status in Salesforce through point of arrival at the customer location. So when the order is arrived at customer location, ERP will be updating Salesforce. And once order arrives at customer location, the system specialist and contract should be notified by SMS and email so they can start the installation. So for that, I recommend going with integration four, which is scheduled jobs from ERP to Salesforce. So we also would be pulling order with the status customer location arrival at regular intervals. 
And once it figure it, it find out that order is raised to particular customer location, you will be you will be doing remote call to Salesforce to update the order status to installation. And at the time, I would be having a record trigger flow. So whenever an order status is updated, I would be utilizing a record trigger flow uh, in order to send SMS by digital engagement uh, capability and email action to send the email. Uh, during installation at each device is added to customer installation. It is connected online uh, to the appropriate UST monitoring system. UST would like this process to automatically create a record in Salesforce for the device associated with the customer location. So here my assumption is that whenever a device is installed, so connecting it with monitoring system, that process is already in place. We don't, I do not need to do anything for that part. Uh, once a device is installed at customer location, a work order would be completed by contractor. The moment a work order is completed, I would be having a record trigger flow to create an asset and link it with particular location. So the moment the work order is created, I uh, will be checking that what are the devices that have been part of this particular work order and that would be created an asset for particular location. Uh, once installation is final, Salesforce is updated by the system specialist and final information from the installation is sent to the ERP system for creation of an invoice. So again, the moment a work order is completed in the same record trigger flow, I would be providing notification builder, uh, custom notification that this installation is completed to the system specialist and uh, in, in the same flow, what I will be doing is I will be taking my integration number five, which would be uh, on work order completion. I will be publishing a platform event, which would be subscribed by ESB using combat protocol. ESB will be calling the relevant ERP system and ESB would update that. It was created to Salesforce. Again, this integration would be made secure by also with mutual transport security. Um, coming to the schedule maintenance, USD performs regular schedule maintenance on its customer installation, and this would be set by system specialist once the installation is complete and managed by the support center after installation. So on average, uh, each customer location is serviced twice a year. So for that, I recommend going with the screen flow with quick action to set the maintenance schedule once the work order is completed. Uh, there would be a custom object maintenance schedule for a particular location. And based on this information, there will be 400K maintenance schedule records per year, which is not uh, that much large data volume uh, to be worried as of now. Uh, when a schedule maintenance is one week away, the system should create a service order in the appropriate ERP system for the schedule maintenance. And uh, once maintenance is complete, the system specialist updates Salesforce on their mobile device and the status of ERP service order is updated on real time basis. So uh, the moment a maintenance is one week away, what I recommend is going with a scheduled jobs, which will be creating a service order. And that would be this source would be Salesforce, destination would be ERP. So ESB would be having a schedule jobs, which will be pulling maintenance schedule with uh, coming week. It will call ERP and create a service order in the ERP. Again, this integration is secured by Orchard with MTLS. And once maintenance is complete, the system specialist updates Salesforce on their mobile device and status of ERP service order is updated on real time basis. So this would be um, a remote process invocation request and reply pattern. This will be when a work order for particular service order is completed. At the time, this integration would be uh, triggered and uh, that would be a quick action on work order. Uh, there would be a Lightning Web Component launch in Salesforce mobile app, which will call ESB endpoint. ESB will call the relevant ERP and ESP will provide response to um, ERP will provide response to ESB and ESB will uh, provide response to Salesforce. So a system specialist knows that um, ERP service order is completed. 
Um, coming to monitoring and issue management, um, issue can be raised from monitoring systems, it can be raised by customer contacts, or it can also be created by support representatives. So there are multiple channels in order to raise the issues. The three existing monitoring system will continue to perform their existing function and there is notifications. So if there are any emergency alarms like fire happen or something, then there are notifications provided by this service. On top of that, uh, native notification capabilities, the monitor system can make real-time API calls when certain events occur, occurs and USD would like Salesforce to be updated when certain events are raised in the monitoring system. And this event should also create a task associated with the issue for support rep to call customer and access the status of issue. For requirement, I propose going with an integration uh, 8A, which is um, create issue creation when there are an emergency. This would be a remote call. Source would be the monitoring system. Dash pressure would be Salesforce. So mule sort would be. Uh, so monitoring system would be publishing notification, which would be subscribed by ESB. And once the notification is received by ESB, ESB would be doing a remote call to Salesforce to create a case. And this integration would be again secured by also with virtual transport layer security. Integration 8B is when there are certain events that occurs in monitoring system. So for those kind of events, there, there is a re requirement to raise cases for that monitoring system would be doing remote call to Salesforce. So monitoring system would be calling ESB endpoint and ESB endpoint would be doing remote call to Salesforce to create a particular issue. And uh, the moment a case is created, there would be a task attached with that case, which would be assigned to support rep who is part of this case. So a support rep can call the customer and access the status of the issue. Now the issue can also be raised by customer contacts, so they can log into Salesforce or website or their mobile phones and submit issues to USD. So for that, I recommend going with Experience Cloud self-service case creation, or they can use mobile publisher app and they can also create cases from there. Now the devices that are installed at particular customer location are fitted with barcodes and customer's mobile device should be able to take picture barcode to identify an individual device if there is a problem with it. And this needs to be linked with a particular case. So um, if there are, here my assumption is that uh, this device barcodes are generated from ERP. That's what my thought process was and it is attached to particular asset. So each asset will have a unique barcode. The moment, uh, so for that I recommend going get mobile publisher with lightning web component plus JavaScript library to scan the barcode. And based on the asset barcode, uh, I will link a case with asset when the case is created. And the issue submitted in this way should be routed to appropriate service wrap based on geography and expertise on the various device that needs to provide. So I recommend going with omnichannel skill based routing, which will make sure that issue is routed to a skilled resource with, with a particular product. Um, if maintenance or repair work is needed, the support rep creates a maintenance task, which in turn creates the service order in the ERP system in real time. And this ERP integration should provide immediate feedback of success or failure to the user. So if there is a maintenance or repair that needs to be done, uh, I recommend. Uh, so whenever that kind of case is created, I recommend going with an integration line. Uh, that would be creation for a service order, which would be kind of maintenance. So this would be a remote process, invocation request and reply pattern. It would be from Salesforce to ERP. There will be a quick action on case, which will be invoking a screen flow. And screen flow will have an screen flow will call NIS external services on ESP. ESP will call ERP endpoint. And um, ERP will provide a response. So up the front only. Um, uh, system uh, support rep will know that whether this particular service order request was placed or not. And screen flow will also make sure that a relevant work order is created for that particular service order. Issue created by support uh, representative support customer that call the support center for issues that are raised through their other channels, support rep and create issue records manually. So I'll be providing a uh, new case option for support rep in the service console. And B is from this point, maintenance or repair work can be scheduled as previously described. So I would be reusing this quick action on the case along with integration line to 
are generated suppose order and on average each customer location will produce 20 issues per year to be tracked in salesforce these are numbers so 4 million cases would be generated per year and 2 million work order would be generated for maintenance coming to my uh, data migration requirements so customer leads from existing crm system for the last 5 years needs to be migrated to salesforce except where they are also in the ERP system as customers, so there are duplicates, means existing CRM are having prospects, but they are already part of uh, ERP system. So here I'll be utilizing ETL staging environment to figure out that whether these prospects are part of ERP or not. If they are part of ERP, I will not migrate them, rather I will be creating them. I, I will only migrate the leads which are not in ERP as customer. All customer location and contact data from ERP system needs to be replicated into Salesforce and USD needs to be able to logically link records between the two systems. I'll be stamping an external ID from two different systems when I'll be creating an account, location, and contact records. And I'll be linking them with uh, relevant ERP. The last three years of Salesforce order and service data from ERP system needs to be replicated in Salesforce and USD needs to be able to logically link records between the two systems. So again, I will be stamping external ID from relevant uh, ERP on opportunity order and case records. All devices from three monitoring system needs to be replicated into Salesforce and USD needs to be able to logically link records between the two systems. Not that some customers have device data in more than one monitoring system. So I will be replicating the devices in asset and I will be stamping external ID on asset with relevant monitoring system. If they are on more than one monitoring system, then I'll be creating multiple external IDs and I'll be linking them. All design documents currently residing on system specific desktop for all of our desktops to be made available from within Salesforce. So I'll be going a network drive connected with ETL. I mean, well, let me go with my data migration strategy. So I'll be utilizing ETL staging and production environment. My data migration sources would be existing CRM, which are having leads. Both ERPs, which are having customer location, contact, sales, and cases data, and monitoring system, which are having assets and products data, um, network drive, which will be having files. So I, I will uh, segregate my data migration into three pages. One is analyze, implement, and maintain. During analyze phase, I'll be doing table mapping between um, a different system to Salesforce. I will figure out which data needs to be archived. I will build a communication plan to business. I'd also have a fallback plan if the data migration at some instance fails, and I'll determine order of load. Once all this, this is done, then I'll go to my implement phase where I'll start normalizing activity from this different data, uh, data inputs. I'll be doing dedup using ETL scripts. I'll reparent the records using again ETL scripts. I'll be stamping external IDs with relevant system. Post that, I'll be going to my ETL production environment, which will be mirroring up Salesforce tables. And from here, I will be utilizing bulk API 2.0 in order to do the data load. I will be using S REST API, which is a three step process to create a file uh, uh, into particular Amazon S3 instance. Uh, QA environment, I will be loading 10% load. Uh, uh, SIT would be used for system integration. Testing with 20% load, uh, UAT I'll start 100% load. Similarly, production I'll start 100% load and I'll be using business users for testing on UAT. Uh, once data is loaded in, into Salesforce, I'll be uh, maintaining and validating it. And before loading data into Salesforce, I'll be turning off all the automations using a hierarchical custom settings. I'll be enabling different sharing rules. I'll be also enabling parallel sharing rule calculations. Uh, coming to the retention archive part, uh, assets, cases, and work order, I'll enable custom indexes. Um, assets are quite large data volume, cases and work order are growing, hence I recommend enabling custom indexes. I recommend archive strategy for closed cases and work order for last two years. Files, I will be recommending migrating design files to S drive. Post work order is completed, and my order of load would be user, account, contact, location, product, opportunity. Opportunity line item, court, court line item, line item contract, uh, post that order, order, order line item, cases, work order, and work order line item. Going to my visibility and accessibility requirements, system specialists should be able to view, edit all customer system data for their own customers. So my uh, account is 
private um, location owner is system specialist as well as account owner is system specialist. I'll be providing object level permission on the profile, read and edit, so system specialist can view and edit their customers. A uh, system specialist, uh, uh, system specialist should be able to view all customer and install system data for other specialist customer within their local app office except for customer financial data. So here I recommend going with owner pay sharing rule. Since my account is private, I'll be sharing my sharing rule criteria would be share account owned by system specialist with particular system specialist. So this would be based on the based on the region based on the office and there will be 150 owner base sharing rule for each of the object which is still in the limit and financial data is separate object owned by a system admin a separate role all manager uh, which are local regional should be able to view and edit all customer install system data within the respective areas including financial data so this will be taken care by role hierarchy by role hierarchy with accommodate that in order to share the financial data, I would be creating an owner based sharing rule where the data which is owned by financial role would be shared with local manager and post that it will flow up. And there will be 150 owner based sharing rules for financial data. Contractor should be able to view edit data only for customer location to which they have been assigned, except for financial data to which they do not have access. So for that, I recommend going with the sharing set. Uh, customer contact should be able to view and edit only their own customer contact and install system data. So customer contacts are CC plus users and I recommend creating a sharing set uh, which will be having customer contact profile and there will be multiple objects which will be included in the same sharing sets and it will be shared with that particular customer contact. Uh, there are certain customers with multiple customer accounts and locations set up in an account hierarchy for this customer. Primary customer contact should be able to see all location and subordinate data across audited accounts. So here my recommendation is go with account hierarchy to link the accounts. So I would be using a parent, parent account lookup here and I'll be creating account hierarchy. So whenever an account is added to parent account hierarchy, I'll be utilizing Apex trigger and I will use Apex manage sharing to provide access to location and other related data to related accounts, primary customer contact. Support center rep should be able to see all the data within their geography only, US or Canada, except for customer financial data. So this would be owner based sharing rule where I'll be sharing account owned by role and subordinate of US headquarter with the US support rep. Similarly, it will be done for other geography. Coming to the reporting requirements, support rep, system specialist, MNA should be able to run report on sales activity schedule for all customers they have access to. For that, I recommend creating an opportunity pipeline report. Support rep, system specialist, MNA should be able to run report showing the number of device monitoring events for all customers they have access to. So this will be a report on account and asset report. Manager should be able to run ad hoc trending report showing the level of monitoring activity over various period of time based on geography, install devices, monitoring system activity, and responsible specialists. This would be a recommend going with WCRM to build the report. Customer contact should be able to run the report showing issue and their status for all issues they have access to. A report on account with case. UST would like a report that can be run live from public website showing number of monitoring events and installation for use in Canada. I think one going with public site page, which would be uh, embedded, L which will have embedded LWC with charges. I'll be using aggregate functions and on click of a tab on public website, I'll redirect users to site page and I will be doing URL rewriting. So user, that would be a smooth experience. Coming to project and development requirement solution that's to support both English and French language. I'll be enabling multi-language translation work and custom labels. UST has geographically separate IT teams are responsible for two ERP and three monitoring system. ERP team have uh, operated with a great deal of autonomy. I recommend going with setup global COE and steering committee to, to set up strategy and vision and resolving conflict goals and include representative for all IT teams in a COE. The IT team have access to only one development, one test environment for each of the respective systems. So this would be a contract first design. I recommend going with hybrid agile chain process, and I would be utilizing mock framework and ESP in order to do all this. Sales management team at USD would like simultaneously release the computer solution to production for all region in four months. I would be finalizing the scope for MVP. I'll be setting a business process standardization. 
There will be a change control board to control scope creep and recommend deployment with CICD. USD would like a recommendation on how to manage the project to address project priorities, technical design issues, team management, organization level issues. So I would be using Jira and Confluence for application life cycle management. There would be design authority and architecture review board to set the right parameters. Team management would be done using governance framework and agile ceremonies. There would be a PMO. And for organization issues, there would be a governance framework with defined RASI matrix. Uh, last part is my environments. I recommend scratch orgs for uh, developing the solution. There will be a CICD which will push uh, solution on the QA sandbox, SIT, UAT production. There will be a hot fix. So if there are any issues comes uh, which are key priority, then it will be fixed on the hot fix. And um, I will be using different set of uh, tools, proware, just uh, proware would be used to automatically generate test cases just to uh, uh, test the Lightning Web components, app PM2, test the mobile apps. At my uh, branching strategy was there would be a feature branch, which would be merged into dev branch. Uh, and dev would be merged to a release branch for a specific release. If there is any hotfix, then there would be a hotfix branch, which would be merged with all these branches. And master would be the source of truth. That's it. Here I conclude my presentation. I think I took 46 minutes.